everyone out there. I'm here today to talk about the Controlled Substance Agreement and Informed Consent paperwork, the new, the new form you get at the doctor. <laughs> uh, so the last time I went to the doctor, I was given this to, um, to read and to initial all these agreements. So there are 23 in all. Um, I'll give you an example of the very first one. Um, or give you an example by reading the first one. It says, All medications and prescriptions for the treatment of my condition will be obtained from only my physician and not anyone else, including the emergency room, hospital, or dentist. The medications must be obtained at only one pharmacy. I will provide my pharmacist with a copy of this agreement and the request to my physician. That's a little annoying because let's say you're getting a pain medication, like a certain type of pain, I don't know, a pain medication from your doctor. And then you get it, you get prescribed it um, from your dentist because you're going to be in pain for your teeth, right? Why does... Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's just, I guess they figure it out uh, themselves that no one will be suffering or in pain when they shouldn't be. But the, the thing is, is that if you're taking a pain medication for your back and then you have some issue with your teeth and let's say you take your, hey, please go in there. Please go in there. Okay. Thank you. Learning numbers. Um, so, <clears throat> let's say you take your, your back pain medicine when you wake up in the morning. And then you take your, your toothache medicine before you go to bed at night because it keeps you up. Well, that kind of, you know, you see what I'm saying? It's just not, I just don't understand how they work that out. Um, anyway, there's, there's a lot of things that I could go through and break down and question here, but... I honestly don't know how seriously they take this. Um, so let me explain to you what this even means. So, um, controlled substances, I hope you know what controlled substances are. They're uh, schedule one, two, three, four, and five, right? So the drug that they, um, that I'm taking that is on, that is a controlled substance is, uh, Xanax. So Xanax is a Schedule 4 medication, and so is um, the other anti anxiety medicines like Ativan, Valium, Darvacet, uh, Ambien, uh, also Tramadol, which is usually prescribed for pain or um, migraines. I've been given Tramadol before, and I actually developed a dependency on it, and it was one of the worst medications for me to be on. Um, I mean, I could go into that further in a different video. Um, I have high potential for addiction, so they have to watch what they give me. And I have OD'd on uh, a drug before that was like probably a Schedule 4. So they act like Schedule 4s aren't that serious, but they can be. So um, Schedule 3s are supposedly less um, problematic. That includes like uh, products containing less than 90 milligrams of codeine per dosage. I don't know how much uh, Tylenol 3s have, like what you get in Canada. I think that's so cool that you can you can get Tylenol 3s in Canada. Um, <clears throat> so, then ketamine. What, what the heck does that even have to do, like... Really, ketamine is addictive. In what way? I'm sorry. I just don't understand. Um, I think that this is just really outdated. Also, anabolic steroids are considered Schedule 3 and testosterone. Okay, that's interesting. I guess that's like for bodybuilders or something. Schedule 2 drugs, which are, to me, they sound like the, the most problematic drugs in our country. Um... Ever, like, for, for now, I don't know. So it says Schedule 2 drugs are anything that, uh, combination, 
combination products with less than 50 milligrams of hydrocodone per dosage, like Vicodin, cocaine, methamphetamine, methadone, hydromorphone, which is Dilaudid. Sometimes you get a Dilaudid when you're in the hospital. They'll put it through your IV or something. Um, but I don't really know people that get a prescription unless they have some serious medical condition. Then there's Demerol, Oxycodone or Oxycontin. Um, also Oxycontin, something that cancer patients typically get. Um, fentanyl, which is a nightmare. I don't even know why that drug is still legal. Why? Why? And Dexedrine, Adderall, and Ritalin. How can you put Adderall and Ritalin in the same category as fentanyl? Why? It's not even... The, ugh! It's so frustrating. It's just not the same at all. It's like you're lumping people together. P people that have ADHD and take Adderall, which, by the way, to me is not addictive at all. I mean, I know some people abuse it, but I don't know that it's addictive. I don't ever feel that... I, I never had an issue with it when I was on it. I've been diagnosed ADHD. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> it's part of my problem, part of my presentation here when I do a video because I can't concentrate on one thing at a time. Um, but I don't take it anymore. I just, it didn't help me, I don't think. Um, honestly, I feel like the Wellbutrin I'm on right now has helped with my ADHD more than anything. Uh, anyway, Schedule 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and read this. This is from DEA.gov. You can go look yourself. Schedule 1 drugs, substances, or chemicals are defined as drugs with no currently accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. So these would be more street drugs. So this wouldn't really be applied to the controlled substance agreement. So I guess those would be like uh, heroin, LSD, which who abuses LSD? Like, <laughs> I just, I don't understand. Marijuana, why? How can something that is now legal in my state and that I can go obtain in 30 minutes, like an un, like a ridiculous amount of it, how is that still a schedule one in other places? I don't get it. And why is it put next to heroin? It's just so frustrating. And peyote? Why is that even on? A schedule one? What are you, why? Do you even know what peyote is? Who wrote this? That's what I wanna know. Methoqualone? I don't know what that is. And then ecstasy, so methoqualone. I don't know what that is. Can somebody tell me down in the comments, please? Thank you. So yeah, there's that. Um, so I just signed this. Basically, this is agreeing to not get Xanax from other people. Like, let's say I pay, you know, I decide I want to abuse it or something, and I take my all of it, my whole bottle in like a week. And I'm like, oh no, I need more because I'm addicted. So I go get it from the street or from my grandma or from somebody else that has it or a friend. This says you can't do that. You're agreeing that you cannot do that. So if you if you sign this and then you go do it anyway, they can, and, and if the doctor feels that you're being sketchy, they can drug test you and see something. I'm not sure what they're going to see. Um, I think that, I mean, I don't understand how they could tell if you're getting more than you're prescribed by testing your pee. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they can obviously tell if you're smoking pot or taking other drugs. I just don't understand how they're going to control 
where somebody gets something or that they do it at all. But it does add to the law here. So, I mean, if you do decide to do this, you are, you know, you admittedly are breaking the law here. And and I know that some sometimes we do that, like, I, you know, in, in one of my videos, I admitted to obtaining a substance, not a substance, but it was just Neurotin or uh, um, Gabapentin, which is not a controlled substance. Um, I, j I just don't really see that as being as irresponsible as going and getting a controlled substance. I mean, unless you really know what you're... I mean, not, I don't know. I don't know what I think, but I mean, if you run out and you're addicted, you have a problem and this is happening a lot. Uh, people that, um, you know, they get a prescription and they don't like it or they don't use it and it's just sitting around. They're not. And then somebody else comes along and they're like, oh my God, I'm out of my medicine. I need some medicine. I have some extra cash. Can I buy that from you? The value of that bottle to someone who is addicted to it, it's, I mean, it's gold. There is no price tag. They'll, they'll give you, they'll give up their house, you know, they'll give you a car. Just give me those pills, you know, that's what they're thinking. And, and I understand that this is a way to control this stuff, but it's not going to work. I don't think, um, I just, I just don't see that addiction is necessarily, it, it's not, I don't really feel that it's a choice. I feel that it, it's a behavior that we um, develop as, as a means to cope with our situation. I have had issues with addiction since age, well, I mean, hell, before... I was, it probably started when I was like 17 or something because um, I would get migraine headaches really, really bad on migraine headaches and I would get really, really sick. And at the time, my father was, you know, dying of cancer. He got, um, he was prescribed Percocets. And I know sometimes people get Percocets for their migraines. I'm not one of them. I've been... I've been given morphine before at an emergency room for migraine. Of course, before they got that desperate, or before I got that desperate, really, they had given me several different other medications, and it had been hours. I'd been in there in pain for hours, just begging them to help me make it stop, you know. So they gave me morphine. Now... This is crazy. The morphine did not take the pain away. It just made me go to sleep. So that's kind of the, the thing with these medications that have that little something extra that gives you um, that feeling of euphoria is that it doesn't necessarily take the pain away. It just, you know, knocks you out or just whatever. It just, it helps in its own way. It doesn't take the pain away. It just helps. So they gave me this uh, Percocet for migraine. And th this is by no means my parents' fault because I had already been introduced to hydrocodone but from the dentist, obviously. So I already had had a taste for this type of stuff. Um, so what ended up happening was I would sneak and take it, take the Percocets. Uh, I thought they were just the best thing in the world. Uh, I mean, I just, there it was. It started that day. I mean, or not that day, but I loved them. I'm not going to lie. I, um, I just kind of went crazy, though, after my dad passed. And Yeah, I'm not going to talk about that stuff, but um, I was an irresponsible teenager, and it's not like my parents just 
left it out. They ended up locking it up 